a lot to me because I grew up here, but it was also growing up in Wrentham where I decided and found an interest in the military, and that happened through the Army Cadet Force for me. Uh, and I think that can underline how important and how significant the Army Cadet Force uh, and the Air Training Corps and, uh, and the Sea Cadets, how important those organisations are. To be asked uh, as ambassador for the event is really important to me because I think in, in one movement, Wrexham County uh, Borough Council have acknowledged the diversity that's within the armed forces. Uh, and that diversity alongside the tremendous sense of humour that, that is a characteristic of our military, those two really important assets are what make our armed forces the best in the world. I, uh, a characteristic of my childhood was that I was dyslexic. Um, so I didn't overly enjoy the prospect of going on to college or then university, which I sometimes feel young people are pushed towards, and it might not always be correct. Um, so for, for the Army Cadet Force has that 13, 14 and 15 year old. I was exposed to the Army in a good way, uh, and I met real role models who were in uniform, and I really liked the look of such a career. Uh, and at the very first opportunity, I went into the careers office across the road with my mum in tow, and made her sign the contract to let me be a soldier. No uh, and that's what I did. So I left at 16 yeah. school and I went straight to the army and I, and I never looked back and I was really glad I did that. So um, settling in as a 16 year old, I remember I was, I was really excited. It was wonderful to meet so many different people from all over the world. You know, the army and of course the Royal Air Force and the Navy, uh, they recruit from across the Commonwealth. So in my basic training, I was getting to know people from the streets of Glasgow at the same time as getting to know people from the Caribbean or Fiji or other places that were, you know, having grown up in, uh, in North Wales uh, and at the age of 16 leaving, I wasn't completely aware of just how diverse the world was. Uh, and I think during that, that basic training period, that was a big eye-opener for me. And it was nice to meet so many different people. I think anyone who's done that will tell you that it's not minute-to-minute -minute action, actually. I spent a lot of time reading books when I was in the desert, uh, and, you know, and, and things like that. But every now and again, obviously, things do happen, uh, and as servicemen and women, we, we are trained to respond to those when they happen. But I think what was interesting for me is I had spent the previous two and a half years doing ceremonial duties in London on a horse, looking very pretty, uh, surrounded by the royal family, and then very quickly I was taken out of that role, and I went on pre-deployment training and suddenly found myself in the Middle East. That all happened very quickly, so I suppose I was trying to get used to it for, 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 for another reason. Um, but yeah, I, re I, I really enjoyed, if it's okay to say, I really enjoyed my seven months in Iraq because uh, I was 20 years of age and I think it was the final uh, hurdle of my growing up. I think I, I think I finally really grew up when I was in Iraq. Um, and it was an experience, I think, uh, that I'll never forget. So for me, I saw the positives in being yeah. sent away for so long. I think um, in the armed forces there, there are values and standards, and in particular in the army there's core values, and those core values certainly underpin uh, every everyday life. Of course, when you join the military, it's not just a nine-to-five job. And this is, I think, one of the, one of the big messages I, I think that go out through armed forces day, is that soldiers don't just take their uniform off in the evening and, and go about their normal lives. It's usually very much part of their constant um, roles in life. Mm -hmm. and for me, as a regular service uh, service member, I would finish my job in the barracks, but then I would stay in the barracks, because that's where I lived for mm -hmm. the majority of my career. So there was never this downtime. So those core values, those those lessons that we're, we're taught, and having the respect for other people within the team, they're all very important. And I think when I, when I did come out at the age of 18 and say that I was gay, mm -hmm. The, re the reason why that reaction was positive is because those core values were instilled in all the other soldiers. And we know that when there's difference in an organisation, that organisation is probably going to be better. And you just look at Liverpool Football Club. Yeah. For that, say how incredibly individual and unique those, those footballers are, and how diverse they are. Um, and, and the same is true in the military. Everyone's so diverse, and we recruit diversely. Um, there's absolutely no coincidence in the fact that we're the best army in the world. I, I think coming out of the army at the age of 18, it happened because I just felt um, I needed to, to do that. It, it was no longer okay for me to pretend to be something I wasn't. When I went to London, and when the army sent me to London uh, to do ceremonial duties 
you, you find yourself in the middle of the most diverse city in the world and you see gay couples holding, their, holding hands in the streets and no one bats an eyelid. Um, and that perhaps wasn't something I was completely uh, used to yeah. in Wrexham. Uh, and I think once I began to understand my surroundings and feel much more comfortable in them, and certainly my friends in the army, my, my four very close friends who are still my friends today, I just felt in a situation where I was able to say I was gay. And the army were absolutely fantastic about it. They were like, this is fantastic, no problem. You have my horizons broadened and to meet so many wonderful different people and travel all over the world and do things I would never ever have had the chance to do. I think that in itself is the best part about the military and I'm just one example of thousands of others from across this region and beyond who joined the military, perhaps not entirely sure what to expect and came out the other end and, and thought, you know what, that was, that was bloody good, that was. Mm. I'm really pleased I did that. Um, you know, sometimes you read in the paper, people question whether 16 and 17 year olds should be joining the military. Of course they should. Of course they should. Because where else are they going to get that, that, that sense of adventure and be paid for it and be taught about discipline and, and get a good start off in life? Whether they go on to spend 10 years in the army like I did, or 5 years in the army, or 25 years in the army, it's, it's a fundamentally fantastic way to start out in life. And I, and I, and I encourage all young people. I encourage young people to join the Army Cadets and the Air Training yeah. Corps because, again, that's the same. That's another organisation and a, a set of organisations that, that do fantastic things, offer safe spaces for young people to, to broaden their horizons. Um, so for me, that's definitely the best thing about being in the military. That's true.